Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. Beware the currents of the lake. It's dangerous to dream. Stay awake. The Nyx pretends to be asleep. Above him, lilies gently sweep. For God's sake. This is episode 185, recorded September 1st, 2024. Gruesome Magazine. Yes, I don't know how it was read in the movie. No, no that, was, like that. that was perfect, Chad. That's exactly that how they, movie, uh, how they yeah. uh, said it in the movie. Sydney I think you've seen it. From... Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, it's Labor Day weekend, and this is what we do for holidays. Mm -hmm. I am your host, Jeff Moore. On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time through 1969. And each episode, We'll discuss the monster, spirit, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. With me this week are my incredible co-host, Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades of War of the 1970s and the 1980s, film producer and director with Wreak Havoc Productions and a comic book artist and writer. Chad, how you doing? Not so incredible co-host this week, but... <laughs> But I'm I'm doing fine. I'm I'm drinking mushroom coffee and I'm eating seaweed, and we'll see where it goes from there. All to right. be fair, Chad, you're probably still shooting, right? That's why you've been so discombobulated. No, actually, I finished. We finished that last week. I have that as not. I don't have that as an excuse. All right. I'm, again, just trying to help. I know, he's, Gregory. I, I appreciate. He's it. too honest. He's too honest. <laughs> also with us is Daphne, who is awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell. Daphne, how you doing? Hey guys, more and I'm more pictures up there. I got to get my yeah. other pictures up here. I got to, I got to slowly but surely. I got a Chad Hunt original here too. Yeah, you do. Well, I got it, several of them, but I got this one. Oh yeah, mm. Ooh, uh, that's good. The it's, one uh, time where it's appropriate to show the monster. Curse of the demon. <laughs> Curse of the demon. <laughs> All righty. I thought um, it would be framed in a gold. Uh... Mm. Frame. Well, I gotta, I gotta get Mikey <laughs> to make me a uh, a, a three D make, make me a three D <laughs> frame. It's too, it's too scary. Chad. No, wait, no, wait, you guys. <laughs> I got a package in the mail the other day from Mikey. Oh, goody! So let's see here. I should rearrange the uh, viewing audience here. So, what what do you think this is? An alligator. Nope. Oh, it's the it's the tingler. The tingler. Is, yeah. the, oh, so you can read it right there on the tag. Oh, I actually. I'm not, I'm not sure why it's white. Well, I recall the tingler was not white, but it's that, actually uh, kind of baby blue powder. Blue oh, okay. Kind of, right. But but uh, and the best part about it is, wow, it wow. is signed by Victoria Price. Cool. Wow. That is so. What a nice Vincent's thing. Vincent's daughter. That's and awesome. I haven't talked to him. I faked him for it, but I can't Gosh. tell. Uh -huh. It says something about uh, made while watching uh, a certain movie. Huh. Oh, here, here it is. Made while watching The Angry Red Planet. Oh. Which is a, a, a an actually somewhat disturbing uh, film. It is. It That's is. That's something to, to perhaps a future, uh, future episode. So anyway. That's cool. impressive, Jeff. Usually you have to, you know, frighten yourself almost to death to get a tingler. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed, Mikey. Salute. Mikey's Mikey's uh, a star, and uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not begging for other stuff, but I just thought that was so cool. He knows the tingler is one of my. One <laughs> that of my was very thoughtful. Yep. Um, and if anybody else wants to send me stuff, Mikey's got my address. <laughs> Just kidding. Hook him up. <laughs> uh, I love the Incredible Hulk. Just saying. Oh, by the way, also with us is Gregory Crosby. Oh, Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a poet, and he's oh oh. What are you drinking? Uh, that would be some Glenfiddich. Uh -huh. Aha. For the unwash. <laughs> yes. It's yes. Hi, different. everyone. Very always a uh, an absolute pleasure to uh, come on as a guest to the decades of horror, especially on a holiday weekend where I had nothing planned anyway. <laughs> well, and, and, uh, you know, doc actually did take a holiday. So I looked around and, uh, doc, so takes, a, doc takes a holiday. I think that's a, a pretty March film. Uh, well, I, yeah, 
his brother. Either Bill that Ripley. or the talented Mr. Ripley. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, Gregory, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Uh, and uh, maybe we should have Gregory read the quote because he is a poet. Chad already wrote, read, read the quote. I know. I know. So that's, oh. <laughs> it, was, it was fine. I, I, I meant should have let him. I didn't. Uh, and I and I wasn't implying that there's anything wrong. No, with no. Chad, Chad always has uh, to read the quote. Um, you know, he uh, has to pull his way. This is a tough one to get through. It's going to be a tough one to get through today. I can tell. <laughs> well, that's and this may be a record for how long it takes to actually get to the movie. Uh, also, Decades of Horror and Gruesome Magazine are partnering with Play Now Media on several of their channels. Uh, Decades of Horror of the Classic Era is on the Classic Sci-Fi Movie Channel, the Classic Horror Movie Channel, and the Wicked Horror TV Channel. A lot of good options there. And you can uh, subscribe for nothing. And you can see movies with ads. But you won't get the premium content. But if you do pay the monthly subscription fee, you will be able to see everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're there with ads. If you want to see us with ads, that's perfectly fine. But we would rather that you pay the subscription. I, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, <laughs> on this podcast, we start by giving some basic details of the film we're covering, followed by each of our first impressions of the movie. And then we'll move into a general discussion of whatever trips our trigger. Hopefully, there will be something about the movie despite all indications differently. Oh, the final card. <laughs> well, then the movie is... <laughs> Lake of the Dead, 1958. Directed by... Yeah. So, this is... I, can, I guarantee you that when we try to explain these characters it'll be confusing but anyway this is mm-hmm. this is sort of the comic relief character i think uh but he's sleeping with this spider crawling on his nose and i just sort of enjoyed that picture <laughs> uh, directed by Kare bergstrom written by Kare bergstrom and from a 1942 novel by andre birka writing as bernard borga the cast includes Erling Lindahl, Björg Eng, Henny Mohn, Andre Björke, Per Lilo Stenberg, Oyvind Oyen, George Richter, and Henke Kolstad. Bork, bork, bork. Production company is Norse Film. Release date is December 17th, 1958 in Norway. The synopsis, and this is a little longer than usual, but I thought, you know, maybe people aren't familiar with this firm or uh, this film, this firm film. Six Oslo friends travel to the Ostadalen Valley to visit reclusive Bjorn, Lillian's brother, living in a remote cabin. A horrible tragedy occurred at a nearby lake, and legend has it that whoever stays in that cabin will meet the same end. The unsuspecting visitors realize that Werner is missing, and a series of unexplained incidents that chill the bone to the marrow are set in motion. I'm I'm uh, very happy that it was oh. and informative. His name is Bjorn Werner, so that's why it says Werner and Bjorn. Sorry mm-hmm. about that, everybody. So anyway, a lot of stuff in there I didn't know before. <laughs> All right, well, let's, a lot. Let's, this is uh, this is Daphne's pick, and uh, so. Let's go with Daphne first, with first impressions. Daphne, go for it. Hello. Um, well, this is something I haven't seen, but I, it's been on my radar for a while um, when I was doing research for other movies for us to watch. And um, this kind of I always ended up being some, choosing something else. But um, then I got uh, the Lake of the Dead book, from Valancourt Books, oh, and um, thought, books. and then so um, I thought, well, you know, let's let's watch it. Fits within all the little, fi- makes all the checks, and uh, so I watched it. I really liked it. Um, I thought the cinematography was beautiful. Um, the score was beautiful. 
mm. the atmosphere. Um, I thought some of the themes were things you don't really hear about or you don't see that much. Um, I really, so I really enjoyed it. And I um, am only about halfway through the book. Um, and I liked it so much that I, on Shudder, the remake popped up right after it. So I just watched that. And I really liked the remake. I know you guys reviewed it. I'm not so keen on it, but um, I enjoyed it. But that's not the movie we're talking about. <laughs> but um, no, I liked it. So I'm I'm interested to see what what you guys think. It's a little, it's a slow burn, which for me is a good thing. Um, but I think there's lots of really good things about it, and I'm I'm glad I saw it. I hope more people see it if they're into into that stuff. Excellent. Well, let's go with Gregory next. Uh, this has been on my watch list for some time, so uh, I'm very pleased that uh, uh, Daphne picked it and that I was invited to come on uh, and talk about it, which forced me to finally watch it after having it been on my watch list <laughs> for a very long time. They're on Shutter. Uh, I really liked it. I enjoyed the hell out of it. And the thing that, that I most enjoy about it is that it's a it, it's a very exemplary uh, folk horror uh, movie on two levels. Mm. So there's the the actual folk horror level with the legend of uh, the suicide and the murder and the ghost, right? Which is what uh, we're doing spoilers in case anyone uh, is wondering. Mm. Uh, which is what <laughs> drives uh, one of the characters uh, uh, insane. So it's great that it uses the an actual folk tale to so it's not just located you know in a cabin on a lake which is often you know a setting for folk horror but it actually uses a a somewhat folk story a legend mm -hmm. as the motivator mm -hmm. for everything but also there's another folk tale uh embedded in this movie and that's the folk tale that psychoanalysis cures everything <laughs> uh i thought it was fascinating <laughs> this movie is so 1958 in its use of the mm. psychoanalyst uh, as the uh, as the psychiatrist is the hero ultimately of the film, I feel like <laughs> made in 1968, it would have been revealed that the psychoanalyst was in fact the murderer and was yeah. back to everybody. <laughs> was back to the character. If this film had been made in 1978, I think the former poet slash critic, uh, who was always plumping for the unknown and the supernatural and the mystery of life. He would have been the secret hero of the movie, mm -hmm. uh, and the, psycho, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the psychiatrist character would have been completely shown up by the yeah. cool nihilism of the universe and the power of the supernatural by the end of the movie. <laughs> but it was not made in 1968 or 78. It was made in 1958, uh, and it is very much the, the you know it, it, there are many echoes of many other movies from the 50s in which psychoanalysis is the key to the mystery. Uh, so I really enjoyed. Uh, I really enjoyed, and of course, that's as we, as some of us know now, uh, psychoanalysis, uh, also kind of a folktale in many respects. Uh, and I really enjoyed that aspect of it, which is good because as someone who always leans toward really, always leaning more toward the supernatural than not in what I like and love about horror, uh, I love that the characters in the movie all represented different viewpoints mm -hmm. as to how to deal with whatever was happening. In fact, mm -hmm. a lot of the movie is them just sort of like, clashing with each other about this sort of idea. Uh, and it was great to, uh, it was great to see uh, uh, because of the, the time the movie was made that psychoanalysis, uh, you know, psychiatry for the win. Uh, for the, <laughs> I, mean, I, agree with, I totally agree with, with Daphne. It's shot really well. All the shots of the lake are really immensely atmospheric and, and lovely and sort of, and sort of creepy. And it's also the, the score was really, really good and really, really effective uh, yeah. throughout the film. The music, uh, I think, really contributed a lot to the overall theme. Uh, so yeah, I enjoyed it. Agreed. Um, so, uh, Chad, do you have anything to say? Um, I'm sure you're all waiting with bated breath to... I am, still. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, let me say, I know Ralph Miller is going to be sitting at home laughing his butt off of, over this, but I watched the wrong movie again. I actually watched the one for next time, The Werewolf, instead of watching Lake of the Dead, which Daphne thinks it's a subconscious. Uh, I do. 
thing of mine that I didn't want to watch. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, not, it's not Swedish, Chad. <laughs> okay. No, those crazy Swedes blew it up. No, no, no. They're no, they're no weeds. They're no, no weeds, weeds Mac. Um, yeah, so <laughs> once again, I've proven to the to the world at large how stupid I am, and uh, it's not a good feeling. It's not. You're not stupid. You just need a little psychoanalysis. That's, that's... <laughs> that might be what my problem is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm with you. I've had too much of it. Uh -huh. Listen, it be... a, little, no, a little hypnotic suggestion. Never mm -hmm. happen again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't even say that, Gregory. I'm sorry. I, you know, I, can't, I can't even promise that. But I do I do look forward to hearing what everybody else has to say about it and and learning about this 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 film from from people cool. that I know and trust and and love. And right. I'm really and I'm really interested in hearing uh, I, we'll get to this, but I'm really interested in hearing since Daphne watched the remake. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in hearing to see, to hear what they changed, given the fact mm. that I just sort of described what this movie might have looked like in different eras. Mm. Uh, so I'm really mm. looking forward to that mm -hmm. as well to see just how much they departed. Mm. What do you think, Jeff? Uh, well, I was thinking <laughs> I'm in the same boat, although I had watched it. Um, so Gregory brought this up, and I and uh, I don't know if I, I can't remember if he had it or not, but this is in. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Severin put out a uh, box set called something. All the haunts, <laughs> all the haunts, <laughs> BRs, a compendium mm -hmm. of compendium of folk horror that includes nineteen movies uh, with a bunch of special features and stuff, uh, and even a CD. So. Uh, this is on that. We've already done one. We did Il Demonio, which was on this box set, oh. and uh, so that was that was fun. And which you want to talk uh, about that one? Uh, <laughs> we we'll go back and do that one over again. <laughs> so just letting people know, it is on Shutter, but Shutter had all the movies from that uh, box set. Um, and doesn't it also appear in the the folk horror documentary? Um, it does. The, the which has a very long title which i can't remember at this uh time. not that <laughs> but there's not that much okay. um not that much about this i i watched the whole chapter about that woodland's dark and days bewitched right. mm -hmm. uh, which, which is, is a really good mm -hmm. folk horror documentary it's good it's a very long but very and it's very long mm -hmm. yes yeah and that's also on shutter or was i haven't i haven't checked all of these since it still then, is anyway is that okay um so yeah, I watched this before and I, I liked it, but you know, like what always happens is when we dive into it, I always, you know, it's, it's the, uh, I think it's the effect, like Bill said, when you really start to learn about what was going on and the people and the background to it, it becomes much more interesting and they start to care more about it and stuff. But it's, it's a very good movie done by, I think, you know, that the filmmakers did a really good job. Um, there is some non, there's some supernatural in it, uh, but it also comes from, it's, it's got this whole mystery take and it's just right. confusing. I'm going to, I'm going to try to explain this. The supernatural is the width of a crow's feather. Uh, <laughs> a crow's feather. A one-legged crow's feather. Right. Uh, but, which, which, which was that, was that crow? I'm sorry. I'm, and this is a tangent, but. Was that crow stop motion? Did that crow stop? Oh, no, I, yes. well, I thought I, it was. I think so. Well, I think it was too, but I also th thought it was anim. It might have been like an animated toy kind of thing. But yeah, it was. Yeah, it felt. Hmm. It, felt it felt like. A I think you're right. I think the the motion. commentary yeah. said stop motion, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. Do, do you remember? Uh, I I didn't. You know, I didn't. I watched on Shutter. I didn't listen to a commentary. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know where I got the idea that that's what it was. Well, uh, you're, I mean, there, but I think it was right. very much like stop motion to me. Uh -huh. So I just was suddenly like, "Oh, that's interesting." Oh, that's I interesting. think it was stop motion. Well, Chad probably knows. Just that. one, just going on my gut feeling. <laughs> that's what we would prefer. <laughs> so, anyway, I you know what I'm gonna I'm just gonna go on, but I I, I like it. <laughs> I liked it a lot. It is. There's some great characters. You got this ensemble cast. It's these six friends. Uh, 
at which which they call themselves uh the old man and five children or something like that on the train ride there so the psychiatrist is already making you know having fun with them he wasn't making fun of them but mm-hmm. um and and the way that it starts out is confusing and i'm yeah. we'll get to that later so uh i mean uh, you know what i'm just gonna do that no we're gonna we're gonna stay to the format so <laughs> <laughs> So where are we? Where are we now, folks? Uh, I believe it's time for uh, taglines. It is now time for taglines with Chad. As played by Chad, his own self. I didn't watch the movie. Ah, but the taglines, the taglines. Did you have you checked oh, the taglines? No. Did you make up taglines for me? Well, there's there's one tagline. I okay. I missed one. Oh God! Don't fall in the lake; you'll drown, especially Chad. <laughs> that was actually a group effort. That wasn't. Hey, sometimes I know how to swim. <laughs> That that sounds a lot more sinister in the original (laughs) Norwegian. That's been uh, Taglines with Chad. Chad's a hero, cool and rad. With him reading taglines, they can't be that bad. That's so sad (laughs) hearing that after after this debacle. All right, all it's right. starting to get cruel. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to somebody <laughs> guessing on 80s so I can tell Crystal how that song has haunted my dreams. <laughs> it will happen. It will yeah. happen. All right. Um, so let's let's uh, take a look at some info here. We had. So this is the poster. And this is, there's not a lot of posters. I found one other poster, but I, I don't even know what's from. I think it might have been a and DVD this is cover. A, this is a stellar poster. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous. As you might expect from Scandinavian design, uh, mm-hmm. that is just, that's like, you know how you'll see a poster and think like, if, even if it's a movie you're not particularly love, you'll think, I'll put that on my wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah. It reminds me of a poster you'd have for a, a Bergman film. Well, I mean, just it's just really, it's just... That's just Jeff trolling chat. I, I'm, just, <laughs> that's, that's, I'm that's, done. I won't do it really, either. It's just a really gorgeous poster. It's a mm-hmm. great design. Uh, yeah, we would be great to see that. It would be great to see this. It would be fun to see this in the theater in a cinema, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, walk in and see that poster. Yeah. And the, the original title is Didotus Tyrn, which is, I think, the Pond of Death or something mm-hmm. like that. But yeah, Pond much. doesn't have quite the same resonance. And, <laughs> it doesn't. <No. laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't. And like, the remake, yeah. strangely enough, Daphne, the remake had the same. Norwegian title, but they changed it to Lake of Death mm-hmm. instead of Lake of the Dead. I noticed that. Was that just, it, you said it had the same Norwegian title, so was that just changed in America? In the American title? or I'm assuming so. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Lake of Lake of the Dead sounds very poetic. Lake of mm-hmm. Death sounds like a, a EPA super fun site. <laughs> I want to point that out. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So and and going back to this, so I I started to rewatch the the remake, mm-hmm. but I didn't have time. Um, and uh, but I am going to because I I have a feeling I'll look at it entirely different. And I don't remember. I think we gave it kind of average ratings, but I mm-hmm. I would not. I would probably change that now when I see how you know what the background is to it. So all right. So I've got some. This is some some pictures here. Now this is another thing here. We've got this movie. That's out on a Blu-ray in this Severance set, but there's not a lot of decent quality images available for this. But one of the things they get into, like they they show up and they have this. Uh, it there's the lake. Yeah. Uh, the mm-hmm. the local constable, who's a friend of one of these six friends, shows them the way to this cabin, and her Lillian's brother is supposed to be there, but he's not. Yeah. And can I just point out that? The, the scenes that take place supposedly in moonlight uh, are, are really lovely and effective. 
you know, often day for night sort of stuff is really kind of, or they say, oh, it's at, it's it's in moonlight, and mm -hmm. you're just like, you just have to roll with it, like, okay, sure, mm -hmm. sure, this incredibly overlit landscape is is the moon, uh, but in this instance, it somehow worked. I completely believe mm -hmm. that they were walking around in really strong moonlight, which I think was very very effective, especially down by the lake. So uh, again, part of the cinematography that's really really strong in this. Well, the only time I thought, wow, this is really bad day for night was when the guys in the commentary were talking about it. <laughs> Up until then, I really didn't, I wasn't thinking about it at all. Right, yeah, no, it was really, I just sort of had this moment like, oh, yeah, this is, uh, it, it's, it's great when you have, sometimes when you're watching a film and you have that part of your brain that says, oh, I know how they did this. And that sometimes that takes you out of a movie, but sometimes mm -hmm. it just makes you, it doesn't, it just makes you appreciate yeah. it's working in the movie that you're watching. Does so, that make sense? Yeah, and this mm -hmm. so that's the cabin, that's the lake, and here's the this crow was on top of the cabin, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't notice it at all. Looks at so first. stop motion. It's yeah. it's uh, it's a uh, it's a one legged crow, yeah. mm -hmm. which plays into the story later. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, so that's what I mean by these guys. They paid a lot of attention to detail and how mm -hmm. they set stuff up in here, and the it it's very wordy. You know, there's a lot of sort of exposition and storytelling, but it's mm -hmm. it's engrossing. I thought, yeah. you know, it's something about mm -hmm. the way they did it. I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like exposition. It feels like people actually try, right. trying to like these characters are these people are trying to figure out what the hell's going on, right? In right, a very right. Scandinavian intelligent way. Well, I feel like the acting and the dialogue was very natural. Yeah. You know. Very naturalistic, just like you said. Well, and I think I, the cinematography was great too. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll have some images of that later. But these are the characters, and I I gotta I gotta pull up my cheat sheet here because it's it's kind of confusing. It is kind of hard to keep track of all of them. I know it might be it might be even more effective <laughs> to just sort of talk about them in terms of like the uh, the types that they represent. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the the top, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. but I do want to. There is something I want to point out. So the, mm -hmm. the couple at the top. Yeah. is he's a writer and that's his wife uh his name is uh bernard borga yes which is the real name of the person that wrote the that wrote the uh that wrote the novel that this is based on but not played by no the no author of the novel who is one of the characters in this so if movie. you look in the bottom mm -hmm. picture yeah mm -hmm. i had a hard time finding a picture of him the guy clear on the left in the bottom yeah, picture yeah. where all you see is his head yeah he is the writer of the novel and he plays mm -hmm. this critic slash is he a poet or well there's a there's a nice story of course uh, the the poet watching this movie is going to is always alert to any mention of the poetry and uh, cinema <laughs> There's a throwaway line when they're still on the train where he says, oh, he wrote poetry in his youth. And, you know, and he's very, mm -hmm. he, he's the type of, here's the very sardonic sort of cynical sort of character who is like, you know, given up being an artist to be a critic. Right. Uh, and I think it's fascinating that he's the actual writer of their novel, but he doesn't try to give himself the part of, uh, of the character played of the, you know, at the top. Mm -hmm. right. He's the actual writer of this story. Right, mm -hmm. and he's right. much more of a comic figure. Um, um, he's he's more he's kind of sort of the lead, even though this is very much an ensemble piece. Right, mm -hmm. uh, right. We, uh, and and we get that because everything is sort of filtered through this story that he's because he's the, that that top scene is him saying, "Here's the story. Here's the what I've written based on the novel mm -hmm. I've written based on this. What happened to all these characters?" Right. I think that's I think that's great. I think it's great that uh, Andre, uh, I'm not sure of his last name, I'm going to get his last name right, that he decided to take the uh, the very much smaller part of, of Merck, mm -hmm. right? Dirk. Uh, Dirk. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, of, the, of mm -hmm. the sort of, you know, uh, cynical poet who believes in the supernatural or, mm -hmm. or doesn't even believe in the supernatural, just like, just the constant questioner of like, yeah, do we really know what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't take the the obvious part. Mm -hmm. Is that to... Uh, to the actor who plays uh, the novelist, the actual novelist. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was uh, that was that was nice. Well, in the scene you. at the, yeah. the the scene at the top with the uh, Sonia and Bernard. Yeah. Uh, just in that little scene, they show a nice sort of playful relationship between mm -hmm. 
that he's kind of the goofball and she's kind of the she'll she it is an argumentative but she like sets him straight with humor you know mm-hmm. like uh, or, or anyway it's it's i mm-hmm. thought they were great well that's what um, Debbie said that, that mm-hmm. realism of it seems like an actual mm-hmm. married couple you know well right. and i feel like that's how they all also you see this type of relationship i also continue with their with their friend with all the friends they kind of joke around clearly um you know care about each other but you know just kind of cha- challenge each other i guess maybe um which they probably all appreciate. Um, uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah. And and I, I think you said this already, but um, Bernard Bor- Borga or whatever, that yeah, that's a pseudonym of the Andre Bjork. Right, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then, okay? return, mm-hmm. and then return that into the character. Character, in- yeah. Now, anybody that wants yeah, to not, uh, explain it better than uh-huh. me, I'm, I'm no, no, good no. with it. So. No, no, I, one of the things I appreciate is that it has a mm-hmm. it has a bit of a frame with this opening, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And speaking of exposition. Mm-hmm. You know, well, the rest of the story is like he's telling the story of the novel and then, right. the, and then it fades into and he's part of the novel. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I like yeah. how even like the scene where Lillian... Uh, describes that you know, that, that sets up this sort of telepathic sort of mm-hmm. uh, uh, thing with her brother, with her twin, mm-hmm. right? Yes. They don't. That's not just a scene where she just tells it. They actually show you the actual scene where you know the car and he's and he was you know she had that mm-hmm. feeling where the car was in the accident. Uh, more and more, I greatly appreciate any movie that doesn't just rely on exposition. But if there's a backstory that has to be explained, they show it to you. Mm-hmm. visually mm-hmm. i really mm-hmm. appreciate that they established that these twins had that kind of twin connection visually before because it's going to it's going to become important right uh mm-hmm. as a story well, yeah yeah there's a hit at uh a relationship that's a little more than just right right your sister right exactly exactly it's great. Twins, but... it's great it's great it's mm-hmm. great you know sometimes exposition is foreshadowing and it's just a char- couple of characters mentioning something uh, but I like how they said, no, we're going to show you the actual thing. She tells the story in the train and they actually show you the story that she's telling all of her, mm-hmm. about her connection with her, with Werner, with, with Jorn. Well, when you first see them, you don't know their brother and sister, right? And they're, right. He, mm-hmm. she's getting him to promise to come over tonight at mm-hmm. seven o'clock. And uh, you're thinking, oh, that's great. And then this other woman walks up and, mm-hmm. right, right. and is like, uh, hey, you know. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. we have a date. He's like, no, we don't. Have, we don't have, we have to get to the, um, your brother the, is like your brother is such a pain, you know. The photo of the scene on top. Um, I I initially I kind of like this kind of listening to um, how you appreciated it, uh, Gregory, because initially I think the scene is kind of like, well, why did he include this scene in the story? Why did it go right in? But then when you kind of understand. Um, the author, the 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 uh, relationship with the author of the story, um, and also I kind of got the impression that um, this, well, it says in the research that this was um, you know a well known movie and uh, a lot of people like it, but I just so I kind of assume that the book is maybe also well known, mm-hmm. and the beginning of the book uh, sets it up that the author is having a hard time writing, and so his friends kind of he asks his friends for some ideas and that kind of sets off this uh, yeah, yeah. this um story so um i kind of like how you described it more of as this kind of like interesting kind of kind of meta thing i guess i don't know well, no, um, and then, and then it's really, you know? it's that stuff related in the movie when he's so frustrated because they keep they keep not telling him the plan uh-huh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then he gets frustrated and said, I'm gonna write a novel. Novel. Yeah. And I'm gonna get back at all of you in the next right. novel I write. Yeah. And I just thought that mm-hmm. that's such a classic frustrated writer thing to sort yeah. of like threaten people with. And of course, and you as the viewer can enjoy that because, well, yeah, we're now here we're now experiencing the story that he wrote. Right. What happened. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. So the the uh in the center picture, the one on the left is his character is Kai Kai Buge, Buga. He's a Gesundheit. Yeah, psychiatrist. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and he's he's sort of the he and the writer are kind of the central characters, the ones that have the most dialogue, especially he, he is the one that sort of directs everybody on what they should be thinking about what's going on, you know, and uh like like he's the uh 
the psychiatrist slash uh, Sherlock Holmes character. Right. Uh, um, and then the, the, uh, and then the, so in the center picture, he's on the left. The one on the right is the writer. Then the blonde woman there is Lillian, who is Bjorn Werner's sister, who is missing. A twin. Uh, mm -hmm. And twin. And then the man that's kneeling is uh, Harold Gran, um, who is one of their friends. And I, at first I thought he was sort of had a thing with Lillian, but they didn't even. Well, they're know, engaged. They, Oh, are they engaged? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, because mm -hmm. then, then they have that line where uh, when they're setting up what they're doing mm -hmm. or where they're staying in the cabin, mm -hmm. it's like, uh, well, uh, uh, Gran and uh, Kai, you can stay in a room yeah. together and Lillian will stay over here. There's, there's mm -hmm. no question of those two staying together. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Um, no, yeah, they're, I mean, that's the whole thing. He, they're engaged and that's why... Uh, Spoiler alert, uh, uh, Bjorn Werner um, sends him to, to the lake later in the mm -hmm. film because he, mm -hmm. cannot, if he can't have yes. his, uh, his sister. Mm -hmm. He's right. not going to allow anyone. And I also like how he, again, this is sort of set up with, on the one on one end of the spectrum, you have uh, uh, Merck with his sort of like, you know, very poet poetic sort of the supernatural, the mystery. Oh, what do we know? And then you have the psychiatrist who is very sort of like, ah, hmm, you know, sort mm -hmm. of in between that. And then the other end, we have uh, Gran, who, Harold Gran, who right away is like, no, there's no, there's no mystery here. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a killer. There's a killer. Mm -hmm. right. there's someone, someone is, someone is, is, is using this legend to commit a murder. So you mm -hmm. have this whole spectrum of like, of, of how to approach this mysterious, uh, we at first think is this mysterious disappearance mm -hmm. of, uh, Oh, well, yeah, I, yeah. And, I, and I don't have a picture of the constable. I, I literally did not see one, uh, but he sort of, ah, you know, he just went off and he's off hiking in the woods with his dog or whatever, <laughs> or maybe fell in the water and drowned. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes the other guy to go, oh, this is murder. And, yeah, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, the I things you guys were talking about, um, how they're each three very uh, distinct theories about what's going on but the final story is kind of a combination of all three of them yeah, yeah. um uh which does seem all three theories i felt like could stand on their own you know um it could have been any of those if you didn't know what was going on but there was a night but the fact that it was a little bit all three kind of still adds a little bit of a mystery to it even when you know you think you know, or you know the the outcome. No, the it's a great way. It's a great way of leading the audience to sort of think mm -hmm. about. Well, what do I think? What do I? Is right. It natural. Exactly. Is it psychological. Is it just pure? You know. Mm -hmm. And the a, other. It's a way to do that. I think. I thought so too. And then the other thing you guys were talking about, um, the kind of confusing, um, the the engaged couple sleeping in separate rooms. I mean, granted, the time probably has something to do with it, but. Um, the um what is norway bernard bernard well i don't know in the 50s maybe it wasn't that um, long, it wasn't that much later before they had the uh well what was it the well, swedish swim team for the gillette uh, again, the only the norway, only reason why i say that oh and that's true <laughs> that's true Scandinavian nations. <laughs> sorry and, sorry uh, norway. and i am endless, endless I am. movies about swedish stewardesses does not mean they're endless movies about norwegian stewardesses okay let's okay get, let's relive in here i take that all well, back Outside all of that, the reason why I mentioned it was because there was a line where um, Bernard was talking to Sonia and he was he had been observing um, the psychoanalyst with Lillian and how close they were kind of hinting to there is some sort of relationship happening there. I don't know if they're doing a red herring or if they were the um, and uh, Bjor, uh, Bernard says um, she's newly engaged. Like he was like, he didn't like that. He was so, um, that they were so close. They were so intimate. So that's kind of why I was thinking, um, you know, maybe it was just related to the time or something or the, the mores of the characters. I also think it's interesting that if that were true, um, that they're talking, you know, about incest in this movie, it, it's, I just feel like, you know, there's incest is such a taboo sus, uh, subject and, but talking about it in, in um, this movie 
uh, at the time, I think is interesting and because we hardly even talk about it mm -hmm. anymore now. Maybe we talked about it in the 80s a little bit more. Like I've never been to one of my family reunions. <laughs> no comment. Um, <laughs> the handle, the handle really, I haven't well. been invited. <laughs> they handle it really well, I think. They, mm -hmm. I mean, at one point, it becomes very blunt when the psychiatrist right. has to explain what's going on. Yes. But mm -hmm. otherwise, it's all very subtle in the sense mm -hmm. of twins and, and that weird connection that twins mm -hmm. have. And I also mm -hmm. like how the, the psychiatrist is all about science, but at mm -hmm. some point it's like, oh yeah, twin telepathy, that's a thing. I know, I Real was very... Become, I mean, it completely just sort of says, oh yeah, twin telepathy, we all know that that's, which it, it is, <laughs> but it's sort of funny in the context of a character who is supposed to read the representation right. of, yeah. of the cutting edge of science. Right, the that's modern, like, oh, the yeah. <laughs> well, and, and Lillian's really kind of in a daze. She, mm -hmm. She's just sort of out of it. They She's... She isn't really taking part in most of what the others are doing, mm -hmm. or they come, you know, like she, yeah, she literally they come on her a couple times and she's just like hypnotized, staring mm -hmm. at the, yeah, at the lake. So. I like how there's a couple of moments where it's just like, oh, she's asleep. She's sleeping. Right. Mm -hmm. like, I don't think I would be sleeping. That was the thing. I did, and this is a tangent. And this is really, I mean, it's not really, a, uh, you know, even the context of the movie, it's fine. But, you know, again, if you remade this movie, is the remake also Norwegian, Daphne? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. If you remade this Sorry. movie, you know, today, probably the first com the first commenter online would be like, Oh my god, they get there and the and the guy the guy is like clearly committed suicide. Everybody would have left. Mm -hmm. Everybody would have immediately gone home. Nobody would have stuck mm -hmm. around, you know. Right. Uh, which is, you know, again that that thing where you go like, Yeah, hey, well, context. This is a different culture in a different time. And so people are gonna react to it in ways that maybe if, if you're watching a movie that's set in twenty twenty four you have a different mm -hmm. expectation uh, in terms of well, yeah, they, the, they handled that with being isolated. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. In the, in the, you know the I mean? more that, that, yeah, no, but they handle that with them and they answered yeah. that with uh, it, it being isolated. So that's why yeah. they didn't leave. It that takes was, a couple of yeah. days for Merck to kind of go, yeah, we go. Yeah, exactly. We leave? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I appreciate it because there, there's that thought in the back of your mind saying, oh my God, this is like, this is the weekend is ruined. <laughs> We came here to see your well, and he's drowned himself in the lake, and we can't find the body. Maybe, we but she go, did. Right? But she did say, "I don't know where he is." You know, she was concerned about him. So, right. um, I feel like they kind of went into it knowing. But they, you know, they, they, they say, but they assumed very much that he initially they assumed that he yes. Well, the constable absolutely. said, "I just saw him three mm -hmm. days ago," or something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, so uh, Mark, and for me. The character played by the the actual writer of the novel, uh, I felt like he was the one that was always going towards the the legend and the ghost yeah. and that kind yeah. of stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, As anyway. poets yeah. tend to do. <laughs> you can stop writing poetry, but you're marked for life, buddy. <laughs> you're always let me let me uh, natural in that in that instance. So so here's the brother. Oh um, yeah, and uh, and who is the actor who played the brother again? Oh, you're going to ask me that, aren't you? I'm, I'm going to look at the notes. Uh, uh, the brother is, uh, yeah, Per Lilo Stunberg. He truly looked haunted. Mm -hmm. uh, and I particularly appreciated how when the journal, again, this is a, I like how this is a nice little meta film where, where mm -hmm. they're reading his journal and then you see the things he's describing in the journal. He mm -hmm. sees, you know, uh, Gravik's ghost. Mm -hmm. But wait a minute. Did you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. How and they talk about this notion of evil spirits and possession, right? Poor uh, the constable. It's kind of like Basil exposition in this, where he's just mm -hmm. there to sort of like relate this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate it because all the talk about possession of evil spirits is really great when he sees the ghost, and you see how he suddenly had a beard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As mm -hmm. he's running away from Grovac, he suddenly mm -hmm. had yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. beard. Mm -hmm. That sort of visual representation of of the possession, right? By the by mm -hmm. the by the spirit. Uh, of the murderer, uh, I thought was great. And the minute he he like he comes back in the cabin and shuts the door, the beard is gone. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that detail. That sort of because it's not really. It's just one of those things that's just. It's a great visual, right, right. You know, key to like. There's something weird going on here, and you know, you you see it. You don't need to draw attention to it. If you're paying attention, you understand that. Because I'm sure there's somebody like, oh, no, no, why does he have a beard? And suddenly he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Well, because yeah. he's possessed. He is slowly mm -hmm. being possessed by this 
the spirit. It's great. So yeah, the, the, the top picture is when he's as normal as, as he yeah. gets. The middle <laughs> picture, he, he had gets. some sort of marking. His face was marked like he'd been in a, mm -hmm. a yeah, fight yeah. or something. And mm -hmm. then the bottom picture is he, he's like stark raving mad with the beard yeah. mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. struggling through the underbrush. And it's it's mm -hmm. it's great. Uh, and at the end, even though even though we sort of are, are sort of led to believe that he's just lost his mind, he still sort of seems he the those last scene when he when, when at the end of the movie he all kind of looks he's made up the makeup is such to make him look like Gravik like the, mm -hmm. like the vision of Gra the the vision of Gravik we had when we when we were reading the journal and you're mm -hmm. seeing Gravik's ghost right yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was great I thought that was just a really nice. A really nice touch. Well, then all kinds of weird stuff like the uh, he tells him the story of the ghost. The constable, I think, tells him that story, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then when they see, but when they see the the footprints, they're like, "Wait a minute, he's missing the wrong leg. <laughs> the pink <laughs> leg's on the wrong." Yeah, leg. I I, I kind of liked that. Like, whoa, yeah. here comes the science. Look out! Yeah. Well, that's how, that's <laughs> how, how uh, her fiance realizes. Uh -huh. Ah. My theory uh -huh. is correct. Yeah. There's a killer who is trying mm -hmm. to make think that right. this is a ghost. It's not, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, but you're still left to, is he, you know, completely crazy or is he? Mm -hmm. um, right. Or is right. he really uh -huh. possessed by an evil spirit? Yeah. All right. Uh, so these are, these are some shots I thought was great. And I, the first thing I want to bring up is the middle one because that shot is creepy <laughs> is all get out but but it turns out it's yeah. just this, this writer stumbling around in the dark yeah wanting to get a drink in the middle right. of the night crashing into everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's a nice fake out yeah it's a yeah it's, like, it's, like, oh, he's just, it's, it's the brings cat you in back the cupboard down. Thing, yeah it brings you back down so you can build it back up yeah <laughs> but apparently this top picture where lillian is she's walking out and, and he sees her Mm -hmm. And he rushes out to save her, but she's walking out mm -hmm. and and just on the, the edge of going into the lake. Um, and he stops her. I, I saw this referred to several times. It's like maybe the most famous image in Norwegian film. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It is. It yeah, is. It's absolutely beautiful. And it sets you up for the re the, the repeat of that scene. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's and I thought cool. the the outfit that she was wearing, I mean, it definitely, you know, because it was white and it's gauzy, it's kind of ethereal and all the stuff, it, it adds to it. But it was also just really beautiful, like just a really beautiful gown. Um, so I appreciated that. It's one of the greatest visual tropes in horror history. It, you right. Know, it the lady in white. Well, mm -hmm. just the, the, the famous scene in the old dark house. Mm-hmm. Where, well, it also know, made me think uh, of like Gloria Stewart's character, like you know, it's like, why am I running around in this white slip? And James Whale is like, because I want you to be this white flame in the dark. Mm -hmm. you know? and it's just, it's just a perfect, uh, it's just a perfect, uh, it's just one of the great, one of the great poetic horror tropes, I think. Yeah. Only in white running through the dark, mm -hmm. or appearing in the dark. I also, it also kind of struck me as like kind of the virginal type of thing too, kind of, kind of the same, kind of hand in hand, but. A little different, yeah. It's a beautiful, it's, yeah, it's, it's a very beautiful. beautiful mm -hmm. And when she falls in, well, I guess it's not her at that point, right? But, right. Uh, the when they repeat, um, yeah, yeah. I just thought, I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. That whole, the whole action of that was really beautiful. Yeah. The bottom picture then is the uh, ghost. It's supposed to be the ghost coming up. That's what Bjorn sees coming up. Yeah after him and he's running through the woods pretty well done i thought uh, oh, yeah double exposure yeah. apparition mm -hmm. i love anytime there's a double you know exposure apparition they're just like okay i'm gonna wait for the cut to then hide the fact that the effort and it's not i just i just again one of the one of the pleasures of that of, i don't understand how editing works is going like oh yep yep here we go now you're gonna have to cut to so that you're not the the, the wonderful illusion that's created is not right not ruined uh, and he was a, a disturbing looking character. <laughs> uh, bit of mm -hmm. a brute with a pig leg. Yeah. Peg legs, peg legs are all a symbol of evil, man. <laughs> right? Anybody who's watching this who has a peg leg. It's like one, one legged crows, you know? Yeah. Crows. yeah that's all that stuff. <laughs> uh, so, that this, I don't even remember 
what this is. These are just some other images that I found. Um, now it's mm -hmm. it's. I tried to find an image. Gran is the one that he ends up drowned, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great shot where they shine the the flashlight. And I, I mm -hmm. tried to find that. I yeah. searched every great image. But. The underwater image. The underwater um, images for Gort absolutely beautiful. Um, I love those. Whether there there was movement or it was just like seeing Gran, you know, kind you know, of iridescent in the water. <laughs> Another great uh, horror trope is the, uh, you could almost call it the Ophelia trope, right? The mm -hmm. face of someone underneath the water. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, somewhere somebody's making a, a super cut on YouTube right now. Of like Night of the Living, or uh, Night, Night of the Hunter. Night of the Hunter. Yeah, yeah. All those marvelous scenes mm -hmm. of, of, of drowned faces beneath mm -hmm. water. I, I, that, mm -hmm. that's, and, and even though that's one of those tropes that's been used a million times, it's always effective. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's always it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's great. Mm -hmm. So the, the middle picture is when now you talked about how the the picture of her in the white gown was uh repeated as a like a, a fake out they had her going and, and that's that middle picture the writer and the psychiatrist are sitting there watching they're they're, they're staking it out to see what's going to happen right and and uh, she walks out there and this guy wants to jump up and go save her and he goes well don't worry it's not her well and you you understand too why they keep they kept the plan yeah. from him because yeah. he would have objected to his right. wife it's his exactly it's his wife yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and he says it's weird because he just does what the guy tells him yeah. you know don't worry well he's a psychiatrist <laughs> You should listen to him. In 1958, you obeyed the psychiatrist. He's watching his wife walk out and fall into the water, and he says, don't worry, don't worry, it'll be okay. <laughs> he gave a little bit of a struggle. Hey, he did. <laughs> he didn't realize he was his wife either. He just yeah. thought it was, you know. Yeah, he didn't, I don't think he realized until after that, that he didn't know what was going on. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, anyway. <laughs> How come you didn't tell me about this? Because then he does back earlier because in the cabin. You. He sees them talking. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, What were you talking about? She's yeah. like, Oh, nothing. Right. You know? And actually, I think he hears the psychiatrist say the last thing was something like, You remember exactly what he said? Something like, Don't tell. Uh, I don't remember, but uh, yeah. yeah. All no, right. He's, like, he's clearly the comic character. Mm -hmm. in the movie. Um, but not completely comic. He's not mm -hmm. a complete, he's not a buffoon. Mm -mm. by any means which i also appreciate it yeah right but i feel like he's just very human no. and like uh, passionate like emotional yeah. you know all these characters had their place in the plot but mm -hmm. they were not reduced just to here's right just, but, yeah. except maybe the constable who had to be there to for all the exposition right? well he spends he he's just one of those characters that kind of kind of talks to himself a lot and yeah you know, it's just always stumbling around when he when he's going to try to save her he's falling down tripping over all kinds of mm -hmm. crap you know when, when he yeah. sees her walking out there mm -hmm. um anyway so other comments about this because that's that's all the images i have i really couldn't i i hope this could just conveys that this is just mm -hmm. a really marvelous black and white film mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. cinematography is great yeah it's so beautiful um like I said before, it's act uh, atmospheric, super kind of creepy, and it just kind of and it's not so over the it like gets in your bones. It just kind of goes along with you in the story. It builds the suspense with the music and doesn't knock you over the head, but it it definitely leads you, and uh, and and it is beautiful. It's a really beautiful filming. Yeah, this is a this is a movie that's all about the vibes, as the kids mm -hmm. say, and uh, it's very effective for that. Well, and the cinematographer is uh, Ragnar Sorensen, and the music was by Gunnar Sonstold. Oh, yeah. And it was good. I have their album, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did try to do some research to find some of the other things, and there is some information about different stuff that these folks worked on, but um, nothing that really, like, jumped out or yeah, but Daddy, did you Did you figure out the Batman connection? Because if there's... Like, <clears throat> oh, I don't usually get the Batman connections, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> brought, brought I can sometimes come up with a Columbo one. Maybe some sort of 70s 
yeah, movie yeah. mystery fair sometimes, enough, but, or Freaky Friday. I can get in some sometimes. Of the, one, of the, one of the downsides <laughs> of doing a Norwegian horror film. Is, yeah, I know. It's barely a Batman. <laughs> Speaking of which, they're making a, a Freaky Friday too. Oh, they did already. Oh, yeah. they, did they remade it with Jamie, uh, Jamie. Jamie Lee Curtis and um, uh, I can't remember. The I thought it. they were Lindsay doing Lohan. another one. Maybe they, they are. They did one with Vince Vaughn and... Oh, into, did they? No, no, with, with, that's that with Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. Oh, They're wow. doing another... Oh, you know, yeah, I think I did see a picture of them uh, into together every, recently. In, into yeah. every generation of Freaky Friday must Friday is fall. born. Yes, exactly. It's the rule. And for good reason. Yeah. <laughs> So where am I? So well, I also that I had I did hear in the commentary that the director had started out as a director of photography, mm -hmm. ah, and and so that builds into this whole mm -hmm. you know the whole setup and and uh, you know set design and that kind of stuff. I think that sure, sure. Um, well, I was I was interesting how how when you guys were talking about um, craze, how often it was. How Freddie, the films that Freddie Francis directed were not always that distinguished in terms of their cinematography. Uh, and yet there are other films where it's clear, it's clear that the cinematography mm -hmm. or yes. the special effects guys, yeah. uh -huh. God, right? That was mm -hmm. one of the things that, you know, uh, for, for anyone who saw it in a violent nature and you're like, why is this kill so over the top? And then you find out oh, the director's a special effects guy. Of course, yeah. it's <laughs> of course it's completely because this is uh, this is their moment to shine. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. It's interesting the film. This is a tangent, but it's interesting the films where a director who has you know made their name in some other area of filmmaking. It's very very clear, right? Like if they were an art director, it's very very clear that they brought that directing. And other times it's mm -hmm. not. It's not mm -hmm. so much. The only thing that I have a little bit, I was a little bit let down with the movie was the ending. But and I feel like they could have just come up with something maybe a little bit better because the whole everything up to then was up to that was great, but just the kind of wah wah ending. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you know. was a, it, had, it sort of it came in, there was a touch of Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah. I heard people you know right. just like yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's you know it's interesting. I mean, that's the thing is that again, if this film, I mean, again, in the remake, Daphne. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm guessing they didn't end it like that. They didn't end it on sort of like a sort of like, oh, the supernatural ooh, is real sort of joke. I'm guessing well, they, they do a little bit, but it's a little, it's a little better done in my opinion. A little better done. I, I, that's why I think I, I, I think that they had the ability, they had the talent and the ability and the eye and everything to make it, to make that ending better in this one, but they just went with the feather. I, I just, it just, yeah. I was a little disappointed. Because the rest of it's so good. Did they stick mostly to the original in terms of the story and how it unfolded in the remake, or did they change up? Um, mostly, they. I mean, they ch did change up some things, but um, is the psychiatrist is the still same. the hero? Uh, no. Aha! But, there, but there isn't really a clear. I don't think that there really is a clear hero. I don't know, Jeff. Do you remember? I don't. I, I don't, don't. But I, you know, when I started watching it, the the mm -hmm. psychiatrist was a much younger guy. Yeah, and it was... wasn't one of the six people that were there, or, or or one of the group of friends that showed up. He was a guy that was already there. Yeah. No, he he did. He was with them. I think he the guy that the guy that was there was. Um, I don't know what his role, but the one of the guys that was in the original group. That's who I thought was the psycho the psychological oh, okay. character, well, but he, but my, they, it was just it was different though it was different that that part was different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you can't make a movie with mm -hmm. a psychiatrist right. as a hero. And, right. Yeah, and but there was a psychi. You know, there was they did kind of cover all those things, but just a little bit more, yeah. uh, a little more updated, like you said. Um, so the the director only mm -hmm. did only directed seven films, um, but one he did after this was another one by Andre Birka called Bells in the Moonlight or mm -hmm. Clocker e Maniskin. Mm -hmm. And the description of the of the uh, uh, the synopsis is four men are gathered to play a game of bridge and when the conversation turns to unnatural and occult events this is not good English also the fact <laughs> that all the bells sound different in moonlight not a clear thought, but <laughs> <laughs> occult, occult, and unnatural uh -huh. is what, where I was going. Um, that sounds like a portmanteau plot. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. As a matter yeah. of fact, it is. Good job. Good mm -hmm. catch. 
Uh, mm -hmm. It's three separate tales. I did hear that. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. That four sense. men are gathered to play a game of bridge. Conversation turns to unnatural and cold events. All the bells sound. Anyway. Now, if they're playing mm -hmm. bridge on a train that's going to a tour of a cemetery that I'm just going to throw in every single portmanteau. <laughs> maybe All righty. Well, I, check this out, folks. I mean, if you like atmospheric and if you're into folk horror, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is and this is also considered probably the first Norwegian horror movie. The, um, so and and as a landmark film, it was ranked. Uh, some some magazine in Norway did a uh, a survey of critics, and this was ranked the, the fourth best Norwegian film of all time you know so it sounds cool i'm i'm gonna watch it for our next episode <laughs> perfect <laughs> you can do your assignment will be recapping your, <laughs> your werewolf will just you know just we will time. come back, we will come back. <laughs> like joseph said we'll do comparisons of the yeah two. oh our, and speaking of which uh if you go to the gruesome magazine website uh our uh ex or former member but you're always a member of the family, Joseph. Uh, had a had a review of this movie mm -hmm. on the Rooster Magazine website, the original one. Mm -hmm. um, all righty. Any last comments? Uh, if I didn't into, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you are if you are a devotee of, of folk horror or or want to see what some of the roots of folk horror, uh, but also if you're just somebody who is sort of into sort of the the Euro Gothic and wants to dive into uh, horror movies from countries that um, that you know were not big in terms of horror. This is a great place to add to your. This is a great film to add to your watch list um, uh, because it's true. That, you know there are certain countries that you know have this great tradition of horror, and there are other European countries where did they make any horror movies? And it's always great to sort of discover the ones that are considered to be at the top of the uh, of the tier of that country's filmmaking. I was watching the chapter in the uh, the uh, Woodland Stark and Days Bewitched uh, uh, documentary on folk horror that had this in it, and I ended up writing down. I, they mentioned fifty movies in that that yes. I had not. <laughs> That's an amazing uh, resource. That documentary yeah, yeah. is just so interesting. And a lot of movies that we had done. I mean, they mm -hmm. they mentioned uh, in the same chapter they mentioned Ani Baba and. Mm -hmm. uh, Il Demonio, anyway, uh, White Reindeer. Mm, mm -hmm. Yes, anyway. I do remember seeing that when I watched it going, hey. yeah." All right. Well, we do have some feedback, folks. Huzzah. Uh, <laughs> let's start with one on the seventh victim, episode 97 from Emulus79. Chad. Okay. Emulus says, Argento was definitely inspired by this. Dr. Judd, Tom Conway, is also a character in trauma and the whole theme of witches controlling everything. He was he was Tom Conway in the seventh victim. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I just say I love I love the seventh victim, even though they cut a couple of scenes that would make the plot a lot more understandable if they'd left the scenes in. It's understandable. Who wants to understand? Uh, <laughs> a couple of because uh, there's a there's a scene there's a scene where you, it's very confusing at the end that 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 Hugh Beaumont's character and and the heroine get together. You're like, what did that happen? Because there's a whole yeah. scene that sort of sets that up, and they just cut it. And there's hmm. a couple of scenes that because uh, it's my only complaint about the sense of the quote, which otherwise is is great, hmm. is that there's a couple of scenes. You know, there's just some movies where you find out later they cut a scene. You're like, oh, wow. that right. explains right. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's usually what happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know, if they cut it for some reason. Um, and by the way, uh, I am so excited that Criterion is coming out with a double feature in October that has I Walked with the Zombie and The Seventh Victim, which oh. have not been available in the U.S. on Blu-ray for like ever. So, Yay, Criterion! Wars Blu-ray Empire. <laughs> oh, that one's on pre-order. None shall challenge me! I, I pre-ordered it, even though I know that they'll be on it'll, it'll go on sale like two days afterwards. Now know? that I have a TV again, I might have to finally break down and get a Blu-ray player. Um, 
Yeah. Jeff might have an extra one around there, a Blu-ray player. There, there are no Jeff has a <laughs> oh, You know what? All my one of his backups. I feel radio show where you open like like you know, from the, you know, open the closet and just like all those Blu-ray players just like spill out. Yeah. Oh, no, they're very carefully. <laughs> um, yeah, all, all of my all of my electronic equipment, old electronic equipment, goes to the grandkids when they yeah. when they move out and get apartments. All right. Episode 151, The White Reindeer, Daphne, from, I don't know, Promalians? Promalians? Promalians. Nine, there Promalians? we go. That probably is. Ah. Hmm. 9659. In the film, the landscape resembles the home of childhood and adolescence. Oh, very cool. Beautiful film. Beautiful Gorgeous. landscape. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm going to use that to lead into... Severin is coming out with a volume two of All the Haunts. Mm. With, the right, with the White Reindeer in it? And the White Reindeer will be in it, yes. Nice. It okay. is, you know what else is in it? One we've done in the 70s, Psychomania. Ah, I remember when you guys did that. No, well, not good. Um, <laughs> After all this time, it's still terrible. Hasn't aged. <laughs> I just, every time I see Psychomania, I just think poor George Saunders. He's about to commit suicide. He's just, yes, yes. He's about to. He's just about to like the great George Saunders about to just like check out. So all all the haunts be ours, a compendium of folklore, volume two. Plus, they're putting out standalone Blu-rays of Il Demonio, ah. and Allison's Birthday, which is another one that's on volume one. Um, but also in volume two, we did uh, the Queen of Black Magic in the 80s and Susanna there's a there's a documentary about Susanna the star of the Queen of Black Magic mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember but Scott Wells talked about her head she has quite a background and mm -hmm. uh, uh, following in in the in the country so anyway check that stuff out it ain't cheap folks I have to start saving my pennies uh, so all righty Next up, and thanks for the comment on uh, the White Ranger, so I could lead into all that. It is a great film. Uh, episode one seventy, Dracula versus Billy the Kid, Gregory from Lone Wolf. Lone, from Lone Wolf, missed you guys. When I first heard about this film, I had the same reaction as when I first heard of Blackula. But just like Blackula, after watching the film, I thought, "Wow, this is actually a pretty solid film." So happy to see your. Pretty faces again. <laughs> you're quite a pretty fellow yourself, there, Lone Wolf. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're okay, Lone Wolf. Because yeah, I, we didn't we didn't go anywhere. I don't think so. Uh, glad you're glad you're back. And uh, Blackula, Blackula again. I want to point out the fabulous Blackula uh, that's over Daphne's shoulder, courtesy of Mr. Chad Hunt. Yes, comic book absolutely. artist extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. uh, many, many years ago, my, my brilliant wife, who is not a horror movie fan, we've decided that Poltergeist, anything scarier than Poltergeist is, is something that she cannot watch. That Poltergeist has somehow became the bar for <laughs> my brilliant wife will watch. That was pretty scary. It, it was like, scary. Uh, that is kind of a scary but, but, you know, there's, there's plenty of films that are, right. are beyond, you know, yes. I, I use that <laughs> as, the bar, as the guide. Anyway, many years ago, we were going to go to, here in New York, we are going to go to Anthology Film Archives to see Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, mm -hmm. and it was sold out. And so I said to her, you know, at Film Forum, Blackula's playing, and she was game, and we ha she had the best time. And oh, I yeah. Because I didn't like it as a kid. I highly recommend anybody watching this who's not seen Blackula, see Blackula. It's great. Okay. I Thank you, Lone Wolf. Glad to have you back. And... Uh... We'll move back on to, uh, I, you know what? And we did talk about that, that that is an amazingly solid movie, yeah. probably because mm -hmm. it was filled with uh, character actors from Westerns of the time. Yeah, it was. That were really good at coming and in. And I think we brought it up in the, that it was like watching a great episode of Bonanza, but with Dracula in it. <laughs> yeah, it was you pretty know. good. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's actually, that's actually a great way to describe that movie. Mm. Like this is a classic '50s West TV Western, yeah. but Dracula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, episode 182, Gorilla from Scott Wells. Back to Chad. 
Our buddy Scott says, the Ritz brothers are an acquired taste. I remember seeing one of their films when I was young. They didn't get a lot of play on TV here either, but I never really got their humor. I was more a fan of the wordplay of Abbott and Costello and the Marx Brothers and the physical comedy of the Three Stooges. I'm with you there, Scott. The Ritz Brothers always seemed a little low-key for me. Like Doc, I have a soft spot for all these guerrilla films and was glad to hear Doc make a call out to the strange case of Dr. Rx with Lionel Atwell, who had his nose in everything around <laughs> that time, but also starring Patrick Knowles, Shemp Howard, and Montan Moreland, and with a guest appearance by, yes, a gorilla. Uh, famous Shemp Howard from the Three Stooges. A great show. Mm -hmm. I agree that Lugosi was often relied upon for his spooky image, and that is played for comedy in a lot of films, including his run in with the East End Kids in Spooks Run Wild and opposite Jack Haley in One Body Too Many. Lionel Atwell also eventually got used in the same way, with studios cashing in on his reputation as often playing a villain in order to make him into a red herring figure. Always glad to see these sort of films come up. I think I may need to write up an article on guerrilla films of the golden age. <laughs> I think I'll go work on that now. In fact, great show folks. That would be awesome. Thanks. Thank you, for I actually, I keep an eye out for that. And he's yeah. right. Lionel <laughs> Atwell at, at was a yeah. red herring in the gorilla. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. two, two, two comments there. Uh, when I grew up, I would like to be Lionel Atwell. And <laughs> two, I still stand by my comment. on the gorilla. There was something along the lines of the Ritz brothers are what killed vaudeville. Yeah. <laughs> I was very mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. Well, Scott's the one that you know he guested with us and picked the movie. Uh, God, what was it? The, the, uh, I shouldn't have said anything. Something about the zombies. Plague of the zombies? No, no. Uh, zombies in the stratosphere. No, no. It was no. a '40s uh, movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but my the point I was going to make is it was, that, it was a serial, right? No, no. no. Oh. Uh, I think we maybe came up with, we talked about that at the time. Uh, there were very little zombies in it. King actually. of the Zombies. King, King of the Zombies. zombies. Mm -hmm. It was serial um, adjacent, right? It was a 40s film. It was a 40, yeah, it was 41, but it was not serialized. It was not serialized. Uh, it was, uh, but the, the point is he was kind of like, uh, wanted to give credit to Mantan Moreland, and, and I would totally yeah. agree. And uh, he's, maybe, I may have to go watch some Charlie... Chan films with him in them just to get a little more Montan moral. Um, you can never have too much Montan. I, yeah, I finally spit that out. Um, <laughs> all right. Episode 183, The Raven, also from Scott Wells. Daphne. One of my very favorites. I watched this many times while growing up. One particular time sticks in my mind, and I think it was the first time I saw it. It must have been at the 8 o'clock Saturday movie, which usually played a horror film. And I remember, in particular, the commercial advertising it, which tried very hard to make it seem like a serious horror film. <laughs> this was, of course, the film that really got me to love Peter Lorre. I was amused by the fact that his incantations when attempting to duel were in Latin and were comically inappropriate. Cave Canum, for example, means beware of the dog. I suspect those were all part of his improvisation. <laughs> Beware of the dog. <laughs> I got to go back now and watch that and, and write those down or try to hear them. I don't mm -hmm. think they, yeah, but. I, I, I would love to see the Raven again on the, uh, uh, on the big screen somewhere. That would here, be cool. Uh, here yeah. in New York. I keep, I keep hoping that one of the art houses here is going mm -hmm. to, uh, in the wake of Corman's death, just do a nice retrospective with nobody. Mm -hmm. on this mm -hmm. great movie. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, I would, I would love, I don't think I've ever seen the Raven on the big screen. I would love mm -hmm. to go and see that. That would be very cool. cool. Yeah, I, I did, but I was, I was, uh, you know, like 12 or something like that. And I, she, I, it was, it was, I always, I tell people about this. They, they used to, this one theater used to play Wednesday matinees in the summer. Uh, for kids, basically, and there was a lot of movies like this, yeah. like The Raven. And... We watched uh, Arsenic and Old Lace a couple nights ago. Oh, so cool. I got my Lori fix. Cool. So uh, good. So very good. <laughs> when I taught years ago, I taught a class called Murder on Stage and Screen, and and I changed it up every semester. But one semester, I, I showed Arsenic and Old Lace, mm -hmm. and I had a young woman say, "Who is that actor?" And I was like, "That's <laughs> Cary Grant." 
<laughs> and she was like, I've watched five Cary Grant movies. He's my new favorite thing ever. I said, my work is done. Yeah. yeah. You've just, just You're welcome. my entire yeah. professor <laughs> communicating Cary Grant to Gen Z. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Good for good for that person. I know, right? My only complaint about Arsenic and Olace is it would have been nice if they'd had Boris Karloff recreate yes. his uh, <laughs> stage role. Okay, episode 184, 20 million miles to Earth from Gregory Crosby. Oh, Gregory Crosby. Hey, it's <laughs> Gregory <laughs> Crosby's turn. Once again, somehow I have to read my own comment. That's okay. It's okay, I know. I usually, usually make Chad do, uh, do my comments. <laughs> It's so very difficult to pick a favorite Harry Hawson, but this might be it. Daphne is right. The Emer is so sympathetic, even as he, he even as he is rightly reeking as in see, I can't look at this. It's, I mean this isn't even a good comment. I completely, <laughs> completely didn't even, I didn't even like proofread this comment before I posted it. He AI had this comment. He is rightly wreaking, even as he is rightly wreaking havoc on Rome because they were they were messing with him. Mm -hmm. Only yeah. Kong comes close when it comes to heartstrings. And I was thinking about this. I was wondering, I was thinking to myself, what other stop motion creatures have that kind of heart? Yeah. And really, the Emer and Kong are right there at the top. Yeah. I defy so, anyone to Kong? suggest a CGI creature with as much mm -hmm. heart and reality as the Emer. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's my comment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love 20 million miles. Something else I got to see on the big screen a few years ago at the Lowe's Jersey Movie Palace in Jersey City. Um, so great. By, the, by the way, Chad, um, we we did bring you up during uh, Twenty Million Miles to Earth uh, because we saw we have multiple instances of how the the, the Y M I R is pronounced Emer, including Ray Harryhausen saying it. <laughs> that you could use to tell your friend about it. That they that's what I always said. Emer, Emer, Y Mar. It's it's pronounced Y Mar. Oh. No, no. And you're, 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 you're going to be like, no, that was a failed German Republic in the 1920s. <laughs> this is the Emer. Get it right, dude. He's still All right. to this day, so I don't know if I could change yeah. his mind at this point. Yeah, you're older probably. than I am. It, it's, it's like Bill and Portmanteau or Portmanteau. Yeah, um, I think I'm going to Portmanteau. <laughs> so we have one more comment on 20 million miles to earth from jose chad you could take that one jose says i grew up watching harryhausen's films with my father who mm -hmm. saw them all first run this one was probably the last i saw on tnt in the early 90s the stop motion and integration with the professor and the girl in the cart with the emir is just amazing to me i've also always liked the shot of ship coming in for its crash landing in the sea First-rate stuff, and it just flies by. It was man. That's it was a such a good movie. It's true. The, <laughs> yeah. the scene where they're trying to get everything off of the of the rocket before it sinks. Yeah, is super effective. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks to uh, Jose, Gregory, Scott. Lone Wolf, good to have you back. We always good to wonder. see you back. Yeah. I've been wondering whatever happened to uh, Evil. I, I he, yeah, he's such a regular. Evil. Evil. All right. Um, yeah, I often much you wonder what happened to Evil. Emulus seventy nine and a new. I'm commenter. trying to bring it back, but. <laughs> Promillions. Prom Can we? Uh, right. Can I throw it a? Uh, uh, it's, I guess it's it's not really a plug, but uh, I just wanted to mention to everyone that uh, it's September first that we're recording this which means that if you have the Criterion channel, they just now have a whole slew of Giallo. All the classic mm -hmm. Giallos are now available for the Criterion. I haven't looked at my email yet. The Bird of the Crystal Plumage, right? Uh, including yeah. a more obscure, uh, a non-Argento one, uh, All the Colors of the Dark. Oh. Uh, which if you, have you guys seen All the Colors of the Dark? Yes. I've seen seen it. It's, mm -mm. yeah. It's, uh, so if you have the Criterion channel, they have a whole old slew of giallo for the month of september to for your uh, speaking of which they mentioned fulci's don't torture a duckling mm. on the folk horror uh documentary documentary yeah, yeah. thank you chip all right mm. uh well, so thank you guys we love our feedback leave feedback at feedback at gruesome magazine.com 
uh, leave comments in Groovesome Magazine's YouTube channel, or send emails or uh, at the Groovesome Magazine website or Groovesome Magazine HNR and DOH podcast Facebook group. What were you going to say, more Daphne? Questions. Oh, I was just click. I was just clicking on the Criterion channel to look at it, and and I the last movie I was looking up was. Um, Joan of Arc. So I was like, oh, oh so I got oh. sucked. I got sucked into the, Is that the, the silent film? <laughs> Technically yeah. not. You have Technically. to watch that. You have yeah, to watch Oh, no, I know. I, I have watched it. Yeah. I love oh, okay, it. I was okay. just. The passion was, of Joan of Arc is not a giallo, yeah. folks. Just want to. No, make it's not. No. But that's. But now I see the giallo right yeah, there. Yeah. But yeah, no, I was looking at it because um, it's a great movie. I had the I had the Criterion um, DVD and I got rid of it. So I was I had been looking to see if my local place had it, but. So anyway, here's the giallo. Gorgeous, right up close to an eyeball, right there where it needs go. to be. Lots of red. Yeah. Uh, well, group believers, that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1920 and 1929. Next up is one chosen by Chad. Yes. Lake of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. all caught up. <laughs> the Werewolf, uh, 1958, I believe. Six. Six. 56. From Fred Sears, the man who brought you the giant claw. I am not sure I've seen this werewolf movie, so this will be very interesting. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Don't mm -hmm. don't let the giant claw deter you. But I did see why Chad picked it. Yeah. That, ah. that plays a prominent yeah, place in the movie. Aww. That's my new banner on Facebook. Right. Oh, is it? Is it? Place. Place. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. Let's look at some royalties from that. Yeah. Franchise, franchise fee. They said my name like three or four times in it, and I was like, I'm going to watch this instead of Lake of the Dead. Have you guys done, have you guys done the return of Dra the 50s Dracula film that has the, you've done Return of Dracula, right? Is that the yep. one that has the blind woman in it? That wonderful scene with the blind woman where Dracula is there with a woman who's, she's blind, and it's just this, do you know the movie I'm talking about? Yes. Uh... It's, it's. I, I can't remember if you guys have done it or not, but it's a really... We've done Return of Dracula, but I can't remember if that's the one. I think it might be a different one, but there's this amazing scene where Dracula is talking to this blind girl and he's sort of like, you know, talking her into becoming his victim because yeah, why not? Yeah. You're blind. I can, I can like, you know, fix I look that everything one up. for you. It's really, wow. it's very, it's a very 50s Dracula film. It takes place in like a California suburb. <laughs> um, oh, that's... Uh... What is that? Do you do you, do you know what I'm talking about, Chad? Yeah, I think so. That's um, it's not the Return of Dracula. It's something else. No, Return of it is Return of something. Return of the Vampire. Return something of, like that. It's really a it's really good. Yeah, we saw we've, we've covered that. We've done that. Yeah, it's just a great. I always think of uh, whenever I think of uh, '50s takes on the classic Universal, you know, monsters. I think yeah. of that really great scene in that. It, I, Bob, I believe he did play Dracula in the movie. The, yeah it was dracula but yeah. it was a modern mark took place in modern day right yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah you yeah. know it's a totally modern day there's like all oh, this whole weird subplot yeah. behind it's just, well, yeah. she, I, I done it or i've there's seen it. really there's one of those scenes you ever see an old horror movie and there's a scene that you know the rest of the movie is like whatever but there's a scene in it an idea in it that you think oh somewhere somebody is going to like take this scene this idea and run with it and, yeah you know, uh -huh. it was very much uh that film mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry, I I, I just I can't, let, I can't let you go without another tangent. And since this movie doesn't have any Western character actors in it, um, I felt that it we know of incumbent upon me to uh, provide the the tangent before the actual sign off. When me and my dad grew up, we sat on the couch and watched all these Norwegian westerns. <laughs> wait, wait until no, it's not wait until dark. Uh, no, no, no. I, it's, uh, I'm, mm -hmm. sure you guys, yeah. I'm pretty sure you guys have done it, but I just, uh, I'm just i blanking on the title. I couldn't it, the, 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 the situation is so familiar in my head, and I just can't think of it. And I don't. I don't We've either done it or I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's, just, it's just, you know, the, the notion of, a, and I'm guessing, is, is the werewolf from 1956 modern day or is it? Is yeah. It yes. Modern okay. Day. Right. Great. Looking forward to tracking that down. Where is it streaming for those people who want to like get ahead of the podcast? Is it Daily Motion has it? Uh, Archive.org has it. Okay. I think it's split up in two parts on archive.org. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm checking here quit. Oh, it's actually on uh, yeah, it's archive.org. Um, 
Okay. Otherwise, you could watch it on Prime or Apple TV, but it's pay per view. Okay. When I when I picked it, it was on YouTube, but I don't think it's on YouTube. Yeah, I dropped it. it well, I couldn't find it on YouTube. I think it was on Tubi when you picked it and it dropped off. Maybe, it, maybe. Um, is what I was thinking. But anyway, well, as we uh, chitter chatter among ourselves, that's it and for tonight. Thank let you. me let me apologize to everybody for oh. watching the wrong movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cutting that out. No, don't cut it out. I'm, <laughs> this is a sincere apology. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you joining. You us. almost had me. <laughs> I appreciate you joining us, Chad. Yes, I, I kept seeing about. you. I kept seeing him. He's going like this. He's nodding. That I've gone. <laughs> well, yes. I was I was Not enjoying good. listening to you guys talk about it anyway. Well, good. Like, I'm glad you're sometimes, here. Sometimes you're at a party. And people are talking about something, and you have no clue what they're talking about. Yeah, it's enjoyable. You enjoy listening to them, and you're just like you just roll with it, and you you know sip your beer, and all is well. As Jeff's talking, I'm going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Daphne. Thanks, Chad. Thanks to our listeners, and go check this movie out on Shutter. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.